What up, my St. Louis City fam? I'm your girl, Kelly, here to give you the rundown on what happened in St. Louis City government this week, and I'm gonna get right into it with these highlights. So, the first highlight I am bringing to you is regarding the ARPA coin that the city of St. Louis have in its possession. So, uh, the housing, Urban Development and Zoning uh, Commission, or excuse me, Committee of the Board of Aldermen, they met this week um, with representatives from the Health Department, uh, the, direct, the um, Department of Human Services, as well as the Mayor's Office uh, to learn about kind of what was going on with this ARPA coin. So if y'all remember, if you recall, uh, Mayor Jones, as well as the Board of Aldermen, they went through very interesting and yeah it was some drama with these processes but anyway they worked it out um and they were able to come up with a plan to spend um some of the arpa coin so again the city of st louis is slated to receive roughly 500 million dollars uh so the final plan was solidified um with the passage of board bill number two appropriating again just a portion of that 500 million dollars um so we're looking at um, 135 million dollars is what board bill number two appropriated um again this is that first installment of arpa coin um that the city received and so um like i said that legislation that was passed by the full board of aldermen board bill number two um was looking at spending the 135 million dollars um to support st louisans and so again just to make sure everybody's on the same page and, and knows what we're talking about here. Here's the breakdown of how that coin is going to be spent. So it's kind of seven buckets. So the first bucket, $5.25 million going towards COVID-19 response, almost $41 million going towards housing relief and building a safety net. We're looking at roughly $12 million going towards re-envisioning public safety, about $28 million going towards economic relief and direct cash assistance, $35.3 million going towards housing production and preservation, $4 million going towards planning and administrative costs, and $10.4 million going towards other costs. So it was like a really long presentation, very informative. Uh, so I'm not going to go through everything, but I'm going to provide some highlights uh, with regards to those buckets that I mentioned, uh, examples of um, how this coin is going to be spent. So with regards to COVID response, um, the health department, um, you know, is looking to spend roughly uh, just over a million dollars on the vaccination incentive, on a, a vaccination incentive program. Also a uh, million dollars on mobile vaccination clinics and $500,000 canvassing, um, doing canvassing and community outreach. So that second bucket, housing relief, building a safety net, um, the Department of Human Services um, is slated to spend $8 million on emergency shelters, uh, $3 million on rapid rehousing, which includes um, and paying six to 12 months of folks rent and utilities until they get on their feet and $2.5 million towards uh, mortgage assistance. So re-envisioning public safety, a couple highlights there. The health department um, is spearheading, a, I guess, various community violence intervention programs that will cost uh, just over $5 million. The next bucket, economic relief and direct cash assistance. And I know this is the big thing because people really want to know what's going on with this, this, um, these payments, right? The direct payments to St. Louis City residents. So this program, uh, $5 million is directed towards an implementation of this program. Families that meet certain income requirements will receive, yes, $500, y'all. And they're saying roughly 9,000 households will receive these coins. The Treasurer's Office is spearheading this effort. They've partnered with the United Way, who um, will be managing uh, the applications of folks applying to uh, be able to get these coins. And I believe the organization is called MochaFi, uh, who, who they're working, they're partnering with as well. Um, they'll be handling the distribution of the coins, which will be distributed via some type of a card. So, yes, they're still finalizing the logistics and this program. It has yet to be started, but they're working on it, y'all. 
The next bucket, housing production and preservation. Uh, one is to highlight the Healthy Home Repair Program. There's $5 million that will go towards that. Um, and this falls under the Community Development Administration for the city of St. Louis. Um, and apparently they're going to be working with Mission St. Louis, who will be handling the bidding and the construction, um, which will help to increase the capacity to really quicken up the program um, and get folks off the waiting list. They're saying it's like something like 900 people on this waiting list to make these repairs to their homes. So hopefully working with Mission St. Louis to kind of build that capacity so people can get off that waiting list quicker and be uh, served, uh, that's something they'll be doing with that program. The next bucket, planning and um, administrative costs. So something I wanted to highlight within this bucket, uh, the planning and urban design agency, uh, they'll be receiving $1 million to support neighborhood and capital planning. And this will help with building capacity among uh, neighborhood driven efforts to revitalize their communities. And then the last bucket, other costs. Uh, some of these things, again, I just wanted to highlight um, there's a Gateway Go program that's slated to receive $250,000, and this will provide free public transit for 14 to 24 year olds. Um, also, there's a, an effort uh, to make sure recreation centers in the city of St. Louis have high speed Wi Fi. Um, $100,000 will go towards that effort, and the mayor's office is expecting by the end of the year for all rec centers throughout the city to have um, high-speed Wi-Fi. Something else I wanted to mention, equitable microtransit services. $250,000 will go towards that effort. Um, and this is actually a pilot program that will provide free rides, free rides um, in electric vehicles uh, for North City residents. And then the last thing I wanna lift up in other costs, community-driven food production, $1 million going towards that. So again, those were just highlights of, of the plan, but I really, uh, if you want to see more about what this is looking like, please check out the playback on YouTube. I'll be sure to share the link um, in this rundown if that's something you really want to check out. Um, all in all, the other people were hella impressed. I mean, low-key, high-key, I was impressed. Um, with some of the things and, and the plans that seem to be uh, moving forward in ensuring that this coin um, is really being spent in a strategic way that will truly invest um, in, in communities that have been neglected for far too long. So yes, um, the HUDS committee, they also plan on having folks, those folks come back to provide monthly updates on how the spending of this ARPA coin is going. So. Yes, more to come on that. Something else I wanted to mention that was provided during that meeting, there's an update that the Department of Human Services gave concerning the Emergency Rental Assistance Program, also known as ERAP. And again, these funds are completely separate from the ARPA funds. So the city of St. Louis received $8.9 million. Um, and to date, um, they've contracted with seven nonprofit partners and have spent $6 million of that $8.9 million. Something else to note, um, there is also an ERAP2 kind of program. Um, and through that second installment, essentially, of ERAP, the city has received $12.4 million, and they haven't touched that yet. So yes, there are resources for people out there, y'all. Another highlight I wanted to mention is yes, the redistricting season. We almost, we are almost done, y'all. We like in the playoffs now, I guess. And so this week, um, the legislation committee, they heard from non-committee members, um, kind of their feedback on how things are going, but they are still working on the map. They released the fourth and fifth versions of the map this week, y'all. Um, and it's, they're mentioning that they are incorporating public input that has been received. Also, apparently, um, there were maps that were submitted, uh, and they these maps were created by community members during a workshop, a map drawing workshop um, that I think Action St. Louis facilitated. So they said that they got those maps, and they are looking at them to see if they can incorporate them into the most updated version of the map. Um, making sure that it is, you know, within the legal guidelines. Um, 
So what are the next steps? So there is a public hearing today via Zoom at 10 a.m. And it's too late to sign up for it, but um, I'll be sure to um, share the link and the information um, about that um, as well as the portal because you can still submit uh, your feedback through the portal. They are still receiving feedback from that, so I'll be sure to share that link um, as well. Um, they will be meeting on Monday. So the Legislation Committee meeting will be having their meeting on Monday to get input from um, other community members um, as well as, I'm assuming, non-committee members from the Board of Aldermen to kind of make the final tweaks to the map. And there are not one but two full Board of Aldermen meetings this week before Thanksgiving. And so the plan is to have the bill second read and perfected um, by the end of this week with final passage the final week on December 3rd. So yeah, y'all, we, yeah, redistricting. Oh, something else I did want to mention that they are working on is numbering the wards. So yes, but we're almost done with it, y'all, almost done. And then the last highlight I wanted to mention, so Bill 132, which was sponsored by Alderman Orion, it was perfected during yesterday's Board of Aldermen meeting. There was a bit of discussion, some tweaks made to the language, but um, it was ultimately perfected. And this bill, it will repeal, it finally passed, uh, will repeal previously passed ordinances, which pertains to the possession of marijuana and paraphernalia. The bill also updates local enforcement priorities and probable cause and reasonable suspicion standards and disciplinary standards to mirror city policy with the Missouri State Constitution, um, specifically as it relates to medicinal marijuana. So in this bill, odor and visual presence of a small amount of marijuana does not cause for probable cause among officers to detain or arrest someone. I will repeat, in this bill, odor and visual presence of a small amount of marijuana does not cause for probable cause among officers to detain or arrest someone. Also, I know through this bill, there was discussion with the personnel department um, as they're looking to change their policies um, when it comes to making considerations among current and potential employees that use medicinal marijuana. So again, the bill was perfected. I'm assuming it'll be up for final passage this upcoming week. So yeah. And then legislative corner rounded it out, y'all. I know who rounded it out. So there was one board bill that was passed uh, at yesterday's Board of Aldermen meeting. Um, this is board bill 110, which was sponsored by Alderwoman Davis. Um, and it approves a petition to establish the Steel Coat Square Community Improvement District. And this is, yes, y'all, one of several pieces of legislation regarding that new redevelopment project near SLU um, that will house the Target and the 196, I think it is, apartments. So that's all I have for you this week, y'all. Please enjoy the rest of your weekend. Stay safe, and you'll see me soon. Peace.